The four critical elements for successful adventure design, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft, I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon so you'll be informed when we upload new videos. Your players are coming over for a session later today, but you don't have anything planned. You have writer's block. Or maybe as a new GM, you've run the Lost Minds of Fendelver and want to create something original of your own. Either way, you need four critical elements to create a successful adventure scenario. No matter the system, the game, the genre, the level of your player characters, or the experience level of you or your players, this is going to be a helpful video for you. It's a great primer if you're a new GM and a great reminder if you're an older one like me. So I designed a few scenarios for Dungeon Magazine back in the day. I'm not saying they were the best, they're not, but they got published in what was a very competitive field that included people like Chris Perkins. And they got published because they had four key elements. An objective, a location, a time limit, and a villain. If you have these four key elements, it's not like the session is a guaranteed success, but it will be more successful than if you were missing one of them. The objective is whatever it is the player characters have to get. The Holy Grail, the Golden Fleece, Ark of the Covenant, Liam Neeson's daughter, whatever. But they should know what it is within 10 minutes. And I mean literally 10 minutes. Within the first 10 minutes of the game, and you're timing this, someone is going to approach the player characters and say something like, Brave heroes, you must go to this dangerous place and get this thing before it's too late. Optionally, you can start with a combat that's no longer than 15 minutes, but at the end, a dying guy is going to say to the players, Brave adventurers, you must go to this dangerous place and get this thing before it's too late. The thing could be a magic item, a relic, a person, it doesn't matter, but it should be crystal clear within the first 10 minutes what it is and where it can be found. Which brings us to this convenient chart. Roll 2d12 and consult. It gives 12 random things in 12 random locations. So a 4 and a 9 is get the evil tome from the wizard's laboratory. Alfred Hitchcock called this thing the MacGuffin. And it doesn't matter what it was. It was just the thing that the hero was trying to get. In the Farford and Grey Mauser story, Thieves' House, they want a skull. In Lord of the Rings, it's a ring. In Dragonlance, it's a lance. By the way, if you want a copy of this chart, you can get it on the Dungeon Grab Patreon, along with tons of other useful stuff. Or you could just copy it down. <laughs> what about originality? Aren't the players going to catch on? No, they're not going to care. They care about their character's feats, magic items, spell, and now, thanks to Tasha's cauldron of everything, there are many, many pets. Your players aren't looking for you to be Peter Jackson or Alfred Hitchcock. They just want to eat some pretzels, chuck some dice, and kill some monsters. So don't beat yourself up that your plot isn't the most original. They don't care. Second element, location. Any location is a closed matrix. Players can make some choices, left, right, straight, giving them the impression that they're free to choose. But there's only a certain number of rooms. Each room is an encounter. The more rooms, the longer the session. The less rooms, the shorter the session. Do you want the scenario to be completed in a single session? No more than five. In my games, they break down this way. Two to three combats, one should be a puzzle or rely on the player's wits in order to escape and one should be role play. But again, don't beat yourself up trying to think of something original. It's all been done. The players don't care that they've been in a million tombs, crypts, castles, and dungeons. Three, the time limit. And this is equally as important as the other elements. Remember how the dying guy said the characters have to get the thing before it's too late? There's a good reason for that. Have you ever noticed when you watch a movie, if there's a time limit, it's always more tense than a movie that doesn't have one? Have you ever noticed you are more motivated to do something when you have less time? Like if you had a paper due or a report to finish or something at work that needed to be done, you're more likely to do it if it's due tomorrow than if it's due a week from today. You might even be putting off that thing now to watch Dungeon Craft, which is totally cool as long as you have enough time to finish it. So if your players go into the Tomb of Horrors, the door should be only open one night for a hundred years, and if they don't get out, they're going to be trapped. The villagers have been kidnapped by a cannibal cult who's going to eat them at midnight when the moon is fullest. 
You need to get the tome from the wizard's laboratory to cast the counter spell that will prevent the chaos gate from opening and swallowing the entire city. Time limits are critical. They create the suspense. They create a sense of urgency. They're the reason why Tom Cruise is always running. Speaking of which, if you want to see the best use of a time limit, watch just the first three minutes of Mission Impossible 3. Time limits also reduce what I consider to be the most suspense-killing mechanic in 5E, the short rest. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want, but if you don't let my daughter go, I will look for you. I will find you, and I will kill you after a short rest. Short rests are meant to be used for Lord of the Rings style journeys. Like you don't want to get two rooms into Moria and have to turn back to Rivendell because your party is too wounded. But they kill the suspense in your average game. Time limits mean your players can't stop to rest, which means fewer hit points, which means a tenser game. And if you want to see how I do it, Check out my video on how to run Ravenloft in one night. You can check out the link below or at the end of this video. And the fourth element, the villain. A great villain like Strahd has their own objectives and they also have their own time limit. And what do they want? Generally what the player characters want, that's what creates the tension. Luke wants to rescue Leia, Vader wants to keep Leia. Indiana Jones wants the Ark of the Covenant, Belloc wants the Ark of the Covenant. Avengers want the Affinity Gauntlet, Thanos wants the Infinity Gauntlet. They want the same things. So why does your D&D villain want the Evil Tome? To cast the ritual that will do some evil thing. And players have to stop them in a limited amount of time. Extra credit. The best villains are the ones that the player characters encounter a number of times before they beat them at the climax. You can use an illusion, a wall of force, an astral projection, a crystal ball. Some way to taunt the players before having that showdown. This will assure your players hate the villain, and when they defeat them, they will feel a rush of catharsis. Objective location, time limit, villain. Ask yourself this. If you're a game master, think about the last session that you ran that wasn't that good. It was just like, meh. Were you missing one of those four key elements? Probably. Players, think about the last boring game you participated in. Was it missing one of these elements? You bet. And that's why if you're a player, you want to forward this video to your favorite Game Master. And Game Masters, you want to bookmark this video so you can watch it again. And before you run a scenario, just do a check and make sure all these elements are in place. It's not going to guarantee your session runs perfectly or that it's the greatest adventure ever. But it doesn't need to be. All you have to do is have a scenario that's pretty good. Good enough that your players are going to come back for more next week. Now, if you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. Questions, comments, suggestions, put them below. Also below, you'll find a link to our Dungeon Craft Facebook group and Patreon, where you can watch an extended version of this video, as well as get other cool stuff. This has been Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. And until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. 50,000 subscribers. That's incredible. Incredible that many people still don't have Hulu. If that's you, click on these videos for more Dungeon Craft.